this is a long video guys it takes it takes a while for me to build a deck <laughs> hey everyone it's esman and welcome to the quintessential mtg channel and today i decided to record down my deck building process um, i get a few comments about people asking us how we build our decks for quintessential commander and since I'm going to build a deck right now for an upcoming episode, I thought I'd record it down and go through, you know, things like how I choose my cards, how I finalize the list, how I decide the lands and the mana base, and all that kind of things. So yeah, today we are building with the new Zer from Dominaria United. Alright, but before I actually start building the deck, I just want to quickly talk about like the power levels that we're going for. It's kind of, you know, a very subjective topic, but in general, we try and keep the power levels balanced by making sure that we build the entire deck around the commander. Because we're trying to showcase what the commander can do, we're trying to showcase how powerful the commander's abilities are. Uh, we're not building the deck around like a specific combo win, for example, we're not building the deck around a specific set of powerful cards or staples that we just chuck in every single time. So it's all about the commander, and in general that tends to keep the power levels balanced. Although some commanders do lean towards a combo finish or a combo build, for example I played like a Jen Jensen deck, uh, Paul played a Merkel deck, and those commanders are just really leaning into the whole combo style of deck building. And when that happens, what we usually do is just try and limit the amount of tutors we use, the amount of fast mana we have, just so that you know the combo is not so easy to assemble you know it takes a bit of work to get there but yeah that's the the mindset the focus that we have when it comes to building a deck we're always building it around the commander all right so that's it uh, let's start building the zer deck i ha haven't taken a look at it at all so we're gonna start from scratch all right so the first thing i do is basically i go into moxfield and i create a new deck here uh, zer QC, so it's gonna be um, Zer Eternal Schemer. And the first thing I do, step one basically, is to kind of formulate a game plan for my commander, for this deck, where it's gonna go. Um, and to do that, we have to obviously know what the commander does. So this is an Esper Commander, Legendary Human Wizard with Flying uh, 1 4. Enchantment creatures you control have Death Touch, Life Link, and Hexproof. And you can make a non aura enchantment. Become a creature with power and toughness equal to its mana value. So right off the bat, um, when I'm formulating a game plan, I want to make it simple. And this is going to be all about enchantment creatures and maybe enchantments that cost a lot of mana. That can make creatures maybe. <laughs> that are big. So it's going to be a beat down deck um, about enchantments. So I'm just going to write here, uh, enchantment beat down. And, you know, I think there's a lot of enchantments in white especially that have lifelink. So I might put in a life matters kind of sub synergy in there. And this can of, of course change as you find the right cards to put in. But for now, this is what I'm going to focus on and see where it gets me. I like the lifelink and hexproof that Zer gives me. So I'm going to find all the enchantment creatures that fit in these colors, right? So the next thing I do is basically I set up my page like this. Uh, I get a scryfall tab, a scryfall window and, and my deck window here. So like I said, I am just going to find all the enchantment creatures and we're going to sort it by rarity. So this is basically step two of my process where I'm just going to chuck in a whole bunch of cards that I think will fit in here. So we're looking for Enchantment creatures, you, you can see all these Theros gods just pop up and things that maybe care about life and things that put in more enchantment creatures. So Heliot, God of the Sun, is going to be a good good fit here. So what I do is I just type it into Moxfield and add it in. Sagas would be interesting as well. So here, Nyctos Paragon is another good one, I think, that is an enchantment creature and cares about life. I might try and find something that is, I don't know if there's anything that can make use of the death touch as well. Right, so archetype of courage. If my stuff already has death touch, giving it first strike is gonna be super strong. So first strike and death touch. Uh, I guess flying is good as well. Archetype of imagination. Michiko's reign of truth. That's um, gonna be 
really good in this enchantment based deck because it cares about enchantments yeah i think i'm just gonna throw in atrios as well the shroud veiled uh just because you know coin counters potentially saving my creature enchantments kind of need to protect Zer as well this is just a whole bunch of cards that i'm considering uh, i'm gonna throw in the heliod sun crown um my, if my things have lifelink and i gain life i can put plus one counters on my creatures i don't know about tasa i might i might put in tasa just because uh you know it can make things unblockable so i'm considering whether these constellation cards are worth putting in and i'm just gonna keep them in the back of my mind for now the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna search for just straight up enchantments in these colors and i'm gonna sort them by mana value i want to see the biggest <laughs> enchantments that i can get that are not auras all right so let's remove the auras so we have things like legion loyalty that that might be fun omniscience of course is huge all right so i'm just gonna put legion loyalty into the list Grave Betrayal is very strong as well. So is Mind's Dilation. Unfortunately, these sagas that um, don't flip into creatures, I don't think they're going to be as good because they're just going to disappear. But I'm going to put in some fun cards first, I guess. Things like Grave Betrayal and um, Mind's Dilation. Ooh, I like Ethereal Absolution. Extravagant Replication, wow. I mean, I guess copying enchantments might be good but these are just big enchantments that i can turn into creatures and that's what i'm looking for right now shark typhoon yes i like shark typhoon so things that can always make more creatures for me is going to be good and whenever i cast just enchantments that are not creatures i can get a shark true conviction <laughs> okay okay so this i think is the direction that i want to go so maybe i can find more enchantments that kind of pump up my own creatures boon reflection is interesting with all the lifelink that i have but don't know if i if i really want to go so far deep into the lifelink oh i should also add that i want to find things that are only legal in commander so enchanted evening is kind of interesting all permanents become enchantments in addition to their other types this of course includes lands as well so i could use this and have an anthem effect to make my lands get plus something and something and make them into enchantments and then i could attack with them hmm. i don't know all right so here we have a bunch of enchantment matters cards so sigil of the empty throne and sphere of safety and Starfield of Nyx, um, that's what I said at the beginning. This is a very, well, redundancy kind of effect for Zer because it makes my non-aura enchantments creatures as well, just as long as I have five or more enchantments. Okay, so I'm just going to stop looking at the mana value now because we've, we've reached the four mana value and that's not very impressive. So I'm going to try and find more enchantment synergies. So things that care about enchantments in these colors so alela when i cast an enchantment spell i get a fairy creatures with flying get plus one i that seems like a kind of a different take on this esper enchantments so hallowed haunting that's something that i think we definitely want and you can tell that i'm just trying to stick to having and as many enchantments as i can in the deck so far everything in here everything are just enchantments uh things like archon it's you know it's pretty good in enchant in an enchantment deck but i don't particularly like it because it itself is not an enchantment so something like celestial ancient might be good in this deck because it seems like we have a lot of token producers and you know plus one counters as well it might just be like a go wide and go tall kind of deck so even things like Starfield Mystic and the uh, original Zer, you know, I, I'm going to put them in the considering section of my deck just because I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want them in the deck. 
But of course, things like Mesa Enchantress, I think these are just too good not to play in an Enchantress deck. Because we have so many enchantments, and every time we cast one, we draw a card. That is fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there as well. Now we kind of have like a short list of cards for the deck that might be the main core of the deck. I think I'm just like, because we have token stuff, making tokens, more tokens, tokens, tokens. Uh, I'm just gonna add in Anointed Procession here. And the next step for me, after finding like this short list of cards is I actually try and do some research to see whether I, I've missed out anything. So I normally just go to EDH Rec, um, Zer, and we're just gonna see what other cards people have put in. So yeah, straight away, Black Market Connections. <laughs> That's gonna be a good value piece. And immediately I'm thinking of something like Phyrexian Arena is also gonna be good. So all this we've also kind of found Doombig Giant, I think we saw that, but don't know if I want to put that in. I guess I'll just add it in for now. There are a bunch of tax effects, Rhystic Study, I guess. I like it more in this enchantment deck than I do in other non-enchantment based decks. So yeah, let's let's just add in Rhystic Study and Smothering Tithe. I'm not a fan of Propaganda and Ghosty Prison. So they just don't do enough for me. Dance of the Mance seems pretty good as well, as well as Mirror Maid. So let's add in Phyrexian Arena first. So because of Life Link, actually all these cards that kind of trade uh, life for card draw seem pretty good. Including, I think, Erebos. One of the Erebos's also can draw cards, if I'm not wrong. So this one, Erebos God of the Dead, that might be pretty good. Alright, so we have some copy effects that I like. Uh, Mirror Maid also reminds me of... Um, Mirror Maid reminds me of the one that can flicker and bounce in and copy an another enchantment. <laughs> Astrid, Astrid's Invocation, I think. Yep, Astrid's Invocation. So this is a fantastic enchantment in general, just because it can... Copy an enchantment and then at the beginning of your upkeep you can exile it, you flicker it basically and then copy something else if you want. Alright, so the Erebos is here. Um, Ages of the Gods, it gives you hexproof, that's quite good. Corsa, cost reducers. Yeah, cost reducers are very good. Ha Hannah is also pretty good. Some graveyard hit, there's a bit of card draw. Esper Sentinel. That's not an enchantment. Um, tutors, I don't really want that. Blink effects. Oh yes, Catilda is also strong. <laughs> Cares about the number of spirits and or enchantments that you control. Unfortunately, the front side is a creature and the back side is an aura. So it doesn't really work with the Xur's abilities. So I'm just going to put that under considering along with um, the cost reducers and Hannah. I kind of like Elsaid of Life's Bounty as well. Okay, then we have a whole lot of um, interaction. Enlightened Tutor, of course, going to be very good in here with Idyllic Tutor as well. Counter spells, removal. A lot, a lot of things that are not enchantments. Um, but Resurgent Belief, that's a good one to put in. Bring back my enchantments. These enchantment artifacts are also really interesting. Biden of Thassa, I think. I saw that just now, uh, but I didn't think too much. But because our stuff is going to have death touch, so that might let them get in for damage. And yeah, we can draw cards. Spear of Heliod. Yeah, that's a nice one. Helm, Helm of the Gods as well. Cares about um, enchantments. Um, Grasp of Fate. That's a really good removal spell. That's an enchantment. Uh, there's a whole Sanguine Bond thing that's that's actually very good with the Life Link. Sanguine Bond, yeah, let's let's get that in. <laughs> uh, Recon Recon Mission, that's gonna be the same thing as the Biden of Thassa. I mean, card draw is always good, right? So more card draw, yeah. Necropotence, yes, Necropotence, very good. We can gain life and pay life. Coastal Piracy, it's another one that draws cards. Uh, I don't know if that's too many, but let's put it in. Greed, 
draw two one mana two life draw a card yes why not removal we have imprisoned in the moon which is an aura so we can't make that into a creature let's keep that in the considering section uh, we have banishing light all that glitters call of grace copy enchantment opalescence makes our stuff into creatures uh that's good actually so because we have sanguine bond a very easy combo would be to just put in exquisite blood as well and i might do that i don't think there's anything wrong with having like a, a combo kind of win in the deck it's always it's like a backup win right in case the game just gets too long and <laughs> you just need to end it breathe the sands is actually quite good because if all things have death touch then giving them vigilance and blocking an additional creature that's pretty good i kind of like court of grace as well but mm, yeah i'm not sure if we can <laughs> reliably hang on to the monarch greater oromancy doesn't isn't very good because shroud means we can't target our enchantments with uh, Zer's ability populate hmm if we're going really deep into the token theme then populate might be a good keyword to put in all right then we have a bunch of lands and artifacts i'm gonna head back into moxfield and right now we have 45 cards in the main board so what i normally do here is i just chuck in like 36 command towers so if you haven't watched the episode where i did uh, about lands and ramp or color fixing Go check it out. Um, normally I just put in 36 lands and between 8 to 9 color fixing or ramp cards. Because most decks want to reliably get to, you know, 5 mana on turn 5 or more. Sorry, 5 mana or more on turn 5. So that's a good ratio to have. And regarding ramp though, I don't really want to add too many non-enchantment based ramp cards in here. So I'm going to try and find some options that can help me fix my mana, but they're still enchantments. So something like land tax might be good. It's not exactly ramp, but it's color fixing. I might also put in something like Oath of Legis. Uh, helps everyone. Each player's upkeep, that player chooses a player who controls more lands they do and is their opponent and then you can search for basic land and onto the field straight away i mean that's pretty good kind of balances out all the lands so unfortunately i think that's about it i still want more ways to fix my mana so i'm just going to add in a few of the rocks okay so now we have a whole bunch of artifacts arcane signet we have the three other signets and then we have the three talismans and because our commander really cares about the colors uh, I don't think I'm gonna add in you know things like mind stone or thought vessel so I think that's pretty good that's nine cards in total that you know cares about color fixing I might put in soul ring here just because we have quite a high top end Alright, so that brings us to 91 cards in the main board and this unfortunately doesn't have any interaction. We don't, I don't think there's enough like removal or there are no counter spells in here. So I'm just going to run through the cards that I have in the main board now and see whether they kind of fit into this plan of uh, beatdown and life matters. And I think that's what I'm going to focus on, just making sure my creatures get in for damage. Yeah, so I think what I want to try and find is enchantments that give my creatures additional abilities the meat hook massacre that's an interesting one <laughs> might end up killing a lot of our things but let's just put that in as an enchantment board wipe so all this watching might be good concerted effort that's that might be good because as long as we have one enchantment creature, uh, we can give Zer all the keywords as well. So all creatures you control gain flying. If a creature is flying, blah, blah, blah. Same for fear. Oh, hang on. It doesn't... 
No, it doesn't work for Death Touch and Hexproof. <laughs> Paladin class is interesting. There's a bit of text, there's a bit of pump, and then a tank creature gets plus one and double strike. So I'll probably take a look at the other classes as well. So here's another one. Rogue class. Exile the top card. Give it Menace, and then I can play the cards. I guess that's pretty good. You know, with Death Touch. Death Touch and Menace, always pretty good. So Phasing of Zalfir is another enchantment board wipe, I guess. Um, I'll put it in first, but I don't know if I really want that in the deck. I like one-sided board wipes. <laughs> I don't like things that destroy my own things. Alright, so Cleric Class is the one that cares about life. And yeah, I think I'm going to put that in because I gain extra life, I get to put plus one counters. That seems fantastic. Intimidation. Now that is a card that, that seems sweet. Can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and black creatures. So I'm really trying to make sure my creatures get in for damage here. Creatures you control have first strike. Yes, that's what I want. Knighthood. Never heard of that card before. Uh, creatures you control have flying. That's that's okay. I don't I don't really care too much about flying. Marquesa's degree decree reminds me a lot of um, Revenge of the Ravens. So Revenge of the Ravens is basically I think kind of better in this deck. Revenge sorry Revenge of Ravens. So yeah, Revenge of Ravens here. So whenever a creature attacks me or Planeswalker I control, that creature's controller loses life and I gain life. So there's a bit of life gain there as well as stopping kind of, well, stopping people from attacking me, hopefully. Never works. Creatures you control have Vigilance. I like that. So it seems like I am just going for a very keyword soup kind of deck giving my creatures a lot of keywords which reminds me i think i saw a training grounds so i think training grounds i must have i think i saw that just now but i skipped past it uh training grounds activated abilities of creatures i control cost up to two less so with this out it's just gonna cost one mana for me to activate the and i don't think there's any other effects quite like that that are in these colors so activated abilities, let me check. Um, Heartstone, cost of each creature ability requiring an activation cost, cost one less. I mean, since my plan is to turn all my creatures in, all my enchantments into creatures, I think this would help. Inner Sanctum, that's interesting. Cumulative upkeep, pay to life. And all damage dealt to creatures I control is reduced to zero. So that's that's an interesting way for me to use my life gain, I guess, and to protect my creatures. Behind the scenes, creatures you control have Skulk. They can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. I guess that's I guess that's quite interesting. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is head back to Moxfield and. This is actually the part where I kind of shortlist all the cards that are going to be in the deck. So what I normally do is I just... Honestly, I just move everything. So I put everything into the sideboard. And this is why I put the command towers in. So I have 36 command towers instead of a whole bunch of random lands. So right now, I only have the command towers in the deck. And I'm going to start with like the key cards. So this hasn't really changed. It's going to be Enchantment Beatdown, Life Matters. So the whole game plan of this deck is going to be playing enchantments, enchantment creatures, and then casting Zer, giving all of them Hexproof, Death Touch, Lifelink, making them into creatures, and basically using their abilities to buff each other. And the perfect example would be Archetype of Courage, um, Archetype of Imagination. Uh, I kind of like behind the scenes as well. <laughs> Giving them Skulk, but I'm just going to put in the really good ones first. 
Cleric class, uh, Ethereal Absolution, Heliod, both of the Heliods, and Hearthstone is going to go in as well, along with Training Grounds, just because I plan to activate my Commander as many times as possible. True Conviction, that's a big one. Nyctos Paragon. I like Legion Loyalty as well. And Michiko's Reign of Truth. Intimidation. And I'm going to put in my card draw sources as well. Biden of Thassa. We have Coastal Piracy. <clears throat> Recon Mission. Uh, Ristic Study. Necropotence. Mesa Enchantress. Oh, I forgot about Knighthood just now. So I'm going to put in a bunch of the Enchantment Matters cards as well. Oh, Erebos, card draw, yes. So his Greed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to put in some of the Enchantment Matters stuff as well, like Doomwake Giant and um, Astrid's Invocation. Celestial Ancient, yeah, I think so. Hallowed Haunting, for sure, giving my stuff Vigilance. Paladin Class, uh, Phyrexian Arena. Oh, Sarah's Blessing. Okay, then I'm going to put in, I have Land Tax and Oath of Legis that help me fix my colors. Then I'm going to put in the rocks as well because I need more color fixing. This is not so much for ramp as much as it is for color fixing. Although ramp, uh, yeah, ramp is good because we have a bunch of big things. Soul Ring. And then Starfield of Nyx for some graveyard recursion as well as a redundant effect for my commander. Not as good because I realized that without my commander, my things don't have all the keywords. And I like Revenge of Ravens as well. Brave the Sands. Uh, Sphere of Safety, definitely. Because we're going to have a ton of enchantments. Okay, then um, Grasp of Fate for some removal. Well, that's uh, I think the first piece of removal that's in the deck. And I think Black Market Connections is just too good not to play. Uh, losing life shouldn't be a big deal if we're gaining a bunch of life. Opalescence and Replenish Resurgent Belief. I don't know if I want those yet. Uh, I might put them in if I have the space. I will put in Starfield Mystic though. I think 2 mana to reduce the cost of my spells. So Starfield Mystic and Starnheim Corsair. Just to reduce the cost of some of my big enchantments or rather all of my enchantments. So yeah, this is going to be the core of the deck, I think. We have uh, 26 enchantments that are not creatures, and then we have 11 creatures, most of which are enchantments. There are only 4 that are not enchantments. Then we have 10 artifacts, of which 1 is an enchantment. Like normally, I think you need about 35 to 40 cards in the deck for it to con be considered the theme of the deck. So this is definitely an enchantment themed deck. As you can tell, I kind of went away from the tokens. Shark Typhoon, Sigil of the Empty Throne, you know, populating with Anointed Procession, uh, you know, Bitter Blossom, Call of Grace, all these th things that care about tokens kind of took them out. Uh, I'm still highly considering things like Helm of the Gods, uh, you know, Hannah, all these things are still being considered. I think I'm going to add in Meat Hook Massacre actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to Scryfall and I'm going to find enchantments that can exile, like Banishing Light Effect. I think I think there are more, more effects that can just exile stuff, like permanents. So something like Quarantine Field, uh, Elspeth Conquers Death, that seems pretty good. Leyline Binding, one of the new ones that uh, that's also pretty good. It's going to cost 3 less if I have that. So 3 mana, okay, maybe not so good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to put in Elspeth Conqueror's Death. So I kind of like Profane Procession as well. You know, Exile Target Creature, 5 mana, why not? <laughs> profane Procession. Uh, things like Cast Out with Flash and Cycling, I also like Cast Out. Although in white black there are just better answers, things like um, anguish and making and utter end. So I think I'd rather go for those instead. So I'm just gonna head back into Moxfield and add in a bunch of um, some of the most efficient removal, right? Because these are uh, Esper is 
the color of removal. We have Void Ren, we have uh, Generous Gift, Anguished Unmaking, I, I like Utter End as well. And I'm specifically going for removal that can hit any permanents. So uh, let me just show you Void Ren, target non land permanent, exile target non land permanent, destroy target non land. Everything is targeting a non land permanent. So those are going to be very good. And like I said, I also like one-sided board wipes. So I'm going to put in um, Winds of Abandon, which is a modular exile target creature you don't control and you can overload it to exile all creatures you don't control. Probably I'm just going to put in Cyclonic Rift as well, just as a uni you know one-sided bounce effect. I could also put in something like Toxic Deluge because if I'm gaining a bunch of life, then I can probably pay a bunch of life. And then finally, I'm just going to add in Counter Spell um, and Mana Drain as well. Mana Drain helps me get a lot of mana and it counters a spell that I don't want to resolve. So a bunch of very powerful effects here. I could also put in Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares, but we'll see. We'll see if we need that because I do want to add in as many more enchantments as possible. I need things that can protect my commander as well. I, I, I'm thinking of putting in re swift reconfiguration. So this can potentially save my commander and it can also be, you know, a removal spell-ish for a big dumb creature because it doesn't, it doesn't cause um, creatures to lose their abilities. So I can still activate it. So let's put that in. And then I'm also going to add in one MDFC, uh, Sajiri Shelter. This is one that I really like. Uh, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And yeah, so right now uh, I'm at 98 cards in the main board. I feel like I just want maybe a modular card. So let's see what modular cards like i'm thinking of something like a cryptic command things that give me more options uh, austere command might be pretty good as well profane command might be interesting so i can give my creatures fear i can remove a creature i can i can return a creature card from my graveyard to the field that might help yep so i think i'm just going to put in profane command so I could also just play something like Teferi's Protection. And I, I really like that card in here because it protects all my enchantments as well. I mean, something like Flawless Maneuver might also be good just to protect my commander from board wipes. So right now I'm just looking at things that can protect my permanents. Uh, Lazo Tap Plating is pretty good, but I think Teferi's Protection is just better. So I'm just going to add in uh, Teferi's Protection, one of my favorite cards in white. And yeah, so that's that brings us up to 100 cards in the main board. But of course, we're not done yet because the land, the mana base is 36 command towers. But before I actually tweak the mana base, what I like to do is just play test with the deck. Uh, try and see what kind of cards I get in my opening hands. Uh, whether there are enough lands, whether I can draw the right cards and curve out well. So this is a feature that I really like in Moxfield. And it looks like, well, I do have stuff to play. Maybe there's just not enough lands. Let's try again. Of course, this is assuming that, you know, all the lands enter untapped. So black market connections. I mean, card draw is just so important. One, two, three, and then we can play Zer, I think. Zer with flying makes these card draw engines pretty strong. So yeah, okay, let's try again. We have not enough lands. All right, let's draw. We can we have a land tax into a signet and training grounds. All right, so I think in general, the deck is fine. It's, I, I get to draw a lot of enchantments, play a lot of enchantments, I have enough lands. We can, I also like to take a look at the curve. I don't think the curve is super important, but I just want to make sure that I don't have too many cards that are going to cost me a lot of mana. So looking at this, I kind of top out at 
3 with the most spells at 3. Uh, I normally aim for 45 cards in the deck just to be lands and mana fixing, you know, things that care about mana. So right now we have 37 lands and then um, there's land tax, so 38. Oath of Legis, 39. And then 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. 47 cards here that care about mana. So I think I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. I, I might go down one land. But let's work on the lands right now. Land, but not type basic. I don't know if there's a better way to do that, but that's what I do. And then I'm just going to add in uh, whichever lands I think are good. Yeah, let's go with Adaka Wastes. Uh, I do like the card draw castle, so castle locked win. And the thing is that because we have things like um, Oath of Legis and Land Tax, I do want to make sure that I have maybe four or five of each basic land type. So uh, I'm going to put those in first. And let's just remove all the command towers and put back one of them. So we have at least you know 15 basics in there might even cut them down to like four each depending on the colors that i need so of course when it comes to lands i prioritize lands that come in untapped so caves of koilos is definitely like these slow lands deserted beach so if i know the names of the others i'm just going to put them in as well shipwreck marsh uh shattered sanctum i think is the last one so normally i also like to add in the the shock lands and the check lands uh, for three color decks. The, the the channel lands from Kamigawa are also really good because it becomes like a flexible kind of land. So let's add those in. A Ganjo, Seed of the Empire. Um, we have Otawara, Soaring City, and Takenuma, Abandoned Mire. Yeah, so I think I'm going to add in the shock lens as well. Hallowed Fountain, uh, Watery Grave, and Godless Shrine. And I'm going to add in the Triumph for this one, which is Rafine's Tower. So we're at 93 lands. Uh, sorry, we're at 29 lands. And I do feel like there are not enough uh, lands that tap for more than one color. Because we have such a high number of basics so i'm gonna add in arcane sanctum as well just a tap land that adds all three colors yeah so now i'm thinking that maybe i want to add in fetch lands as well because i have lifelink right so i'm gonna add in flooded strand uh marsh flats polluted delta and then because of that i want to have the lands that have the basic land subtype and that can come in untapped so there's sunken hollow uh prairie stream yes so we're at 35 lands 36 including mdfc's and right now i'm just going to take a look at the mana that i need so it's mostly a white deck 44 of 86 mana symbols are white well more black than blue so currently I think I need more white and I can reduce the blue mana. So I'm going to just go down to three islands. Battleborn. Oh, I forgot about the Battleborn lands. All right. So I'm going to add in the Battleborn lands. Sea of Clouds, uh, Vault of Champions, Morphic Pool. So yeah, I'm going to add in a bunch of utility lands as well. Riptide Lab is great because Zer is a wizard and I can use it to save him from any removal i'm also gonna add in heliot's hall of heliot's generosity yeah that's right so that's the one that can return enchantment from my graveyard back on top of my library sarah sanctum roadside reliquary that's interesting actually so with that um i still think maybe a bojuka bulk would be good for some graveyard hit i could add in scavenger grounds as well but Mm, meh. So we have three. We have too many lands right now. Uh, we have 13 basics. I think I can go down to 12 basics. I think I'll go down the Morphic Pool because 
I mostly need white. I don't need so much blue and black. So yeah, I think I'm just going to remove a swamp here. Because we do have Bog, Castle Lockwin that are just pure black sources with Takenuma as well. So all in all, we have 20 lands out of 37 that produce white. We have 16 producing blue and 17 producing black. And that's not counting the fetch lands, of course. And finally, after adding in the lands, I am going to run through another playtest of this deck. I mean, overall, it feels good. We can curve out, we have our lands. Let's try another one where we don't have land tags. Yeah, so pretty good, I think. A lot of seems keepable. Well, not soul ring. Let's try one without soul ring. So land, land. We got a signet. Hmm, not enough lands, I think. So yeah, the playtest looks fine. I think this is obviously more of a first draft kind of a deck. I usually run it through a few times and I let, I let the deck sink into my brain and I think about it throughout the days. Uh, this took a long time. This I've been recording for two hours now. So honestly, I don't know how long, how long the video is going to be, but this is how I built a deck. Um, I think it's pretty thorough. I will also sometimes go onto YouTube or Reddit just to do a bit more research and see what other people have done with the deck. Uh, some of the things I'm not so happy about with the deck is that it kind of feels like Xur needs to be protected a little bit more because without Xur, um, all my enchantment creatures kind of lose their abilities. It's probably going to remain mostly the same. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments about the deck or my deck building process, let me know. I'll probably... I, I probably want to do more of these like deck building process kind of videos, but more of an interview style with some of the other uh, quintessential commander guys. So let me know who you want me to kind of interview. Uh, how they build a deck, what's their process, what's their thinking, how they decide what cards to put in the deck. And I'll try and get them on the show. So that's it for this video. <laughs> if you've watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>